Back, it's Thirsty Thursday on Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. Uh, we go from uh, a little lightening of the mood with some magic tricks and mentalist maneuvers here in studio. Uh, back to the big story of the day. The articles of impeachment have been transmitted to the Senate. Uh, and to break that all down with us, uh, Frankie joins us again. He's back over in the Frank Zone. And uh, in studio with me is uh, Judge Herb Dodell. He is the author of From the Trench to the Bench. And uh, there's some really crazy stuff going on out there, Judge, with this impeachment. I can't get my head around it. Well, I think people give it a misnomer. An impeachment is not a trial because a trial has certain elements that this one doesn't have. And you rarely have a situation where the foreman of the jury tells you that the majority of the jury has already decided on a verdict before you even start the trial. And every trial that ever takes place has witnesses and documents and things of that nature. So this is really not a trial. It's a misnomer to begin with. And there really are no rules. The rules are as you go. And it changes from administration to administration. Whoever's controlling the Senate makes the rules. It's not the golden rule, which is who has the gold rules. The fact of the matter is, this is pretty much going to be like this show. It's already pretty much laid out. All parts are being cast. All the characters are there. And the result has already been determined. So I have been saying from the beginning, even the way the House side managed the hearings wasn't really fair either. Um, because only the Democrats got to make the rules. I've been calling the whole thing Kabuki Theater. It's all, everyone knows what the outcome is going to be. It'd be a boring movie, actually. Well, if you know what really should be done, I had an idea not too long ago, and we're going to do it, is to really run it as though it was a criminal trial, because it is a criminal trial, in a sense, the result being basically removal, as opposed to a, you know, a sentence of jail time. But the well, fact that... Well, crime is, in the, um, just, you know, you're a judge. Wouldn't you, to have a, to, for it to be a criminal trial, wouldn't you need an actual crime? I don't think either of the articles of impeachment that have been put forth are actual in the criminal code as you crimes. Well, you don't need a crime to have an impeachment. That's, that's the odd part. Well, well, you said let's run it like a criminal trial. Let's assume that you did this as a criminal trial. What would be the charge? The charge would be whatever it was the indictment was, which is obstruction and basically abuse of power. But you try it as a criminal case where the burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt, which is a criminal standard. There Got is it. no standard in the impeachment. Right. Whether they have to prove it by a preponderance or beyond a doubt, there's no rule. It's whatever the politicians decide it's going to be. Let's bring my uh, voice of reason over there. Frankie has Judge, some uh, always so enlightening to have you join us in studio. Uh, I've learned a lot from your, your book and from our conversations on radio and TV. I am curious, a lot of people look at this, particularly Trump supporters, they look at this impeachment the same way Clinton supporters looked at it 20 years ago, which is a blatantly partisan exercise run by politicians. My question for you is, going back to the founding of the Republic, has impeachment always been that way, or was there a time when impeachment was largely considered above partisanship and above politics? Well, the, the, the founders of our Constitution intended it to be fair and impartial, although there were no rules. This has become a political real statement. Uh, if there was a different administration, would they be doing the same thing? Probably not. But here you have a vague standard, the rule is that there's no rule. And whatever the decision is, is going to be based on political considerations. So it has nothing to do really with the law. To well, call this a trial is really so a Let misnomer. me ask you about the law. Yeah. Since today, uh, an independent government watchdog, the Government Accountability Office, came out and said that by delaying aid to Ukraine, the president actually uh, d broke the law, uh, something called the Impoundment Control Act. I think that was what Nancy Pelosi referred to in her remarks right before our show this morning. This was Nancy Pelosi this morning. The, pre the OMB, the White House, the administration broke, I'm saying this, broke the law. They say we conclude that they violated uh, the uh, Impoundment Control Act. This reinforces, again, the need for documents and eyewitnesses in the Senate. Do you think this changes the equation at all come the Senate trial? And if not, what does this mean, if anything? I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever because the result has already been preordained. 
Nothing is going to change other than the political landscape in which we find ourselves. Whether or not members of the Senate who are jurors decide to act fairly and impartially, which is their oath, remains to be seen. It's unlikely in the political world that there's going to be 67 senators to vote for the equivalent of a conviction and an ultimate removal of office. But if you ran it as, as a real criminal trial, and I'm a former prosecutor, so I've been on both sides, and the reality is you bring in witnesses, you bring in documents, you try it like you would try a regular case is cross-examination. The prosecution gets to call whatever witnesses they believe are necessary to prove their case. Because okay. one of the key things, and I used to say this every day that I took the bench, most cases are decided on something called the burden of proof. In a civil case, it's preponderance of the evidence, meaning more likely than not. In a criminal case, it's beyond a reasonable doubt to a moral certainty, a much higher standard. So if you tried this as a real criminal case, instead of being in the Senate where the jury is the jury, and you had a real audience The judge would probably, you'd probably dismiss this. If they asked for a dismissal, you'd probably dismiss it. Almost uh, everything they have in there is hearsay. Well, hearsay has many exceptions, by the way. And because it's hearsay doesn't mean it doesn't get into evidence. Business records come in as an exception to the hearsay rule. Admissions, declarations against penal interest. There's lots of exceptions to that. But there are witnesses, from what I can see so far, that were percipient. Percipient meaning they were there. They heard it, they saw it, they felt it, they touched it. First of all, I want to remind folks that they can listen to you every Monday night uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern at kcaaradio.com if you want to hear a little more wisdom. Second, I want to thank you for letting John borrow your gavel for the show today. You know, I was telling people, I don't even know where the gavel is. Is this your gavel? Is oh, is, is that where I tried it's to... appeared to? I'm going to have to bring this and, session of... Well, I, I love doing that. Thank I'm you sorry. very much I mean, for the opportunity. You want to bring this... You want to call? The, you want to close this session with the, with I, the gavel? You know, you I never to... used a gavel in all the 10 years right. I was on the bench. <laughs> I don't, so right, I don't, right, I don't right, even know a, where it was. Give, give us a first. A give us one gavel. For, let's okay. end this. There you very go. Very good. Hey, That's Judge Abdel, author of From the Trench to the Bench. You can also hear him on For the People with Judge Herb Doddell every Monday night. Thank you for being here with My us, pleasure. Judge. Really appreciate it. Quick break, more liquid lunch right after this.